Jordan Witzel is next. Jordan is our friendly neighborhood meteorologist for both Global TV Calgary and QR 77 morning shows. Please welcome Jordan. Good evening. Who's still singing Sweet City Woman? It's in my top 10 list. Best songs of all time. Let's do this. Holy shit, the meteorologist is going to talk about climate. What a surprise, right? I might not be qualified because I'm a meteorologist, not a climatologist. But I want you to question your perspective after the seven minutes and uh, consider a few things. Much like maybe vaccinations is getting to be an exhausting topic to listen to, maybe climate is. And maybe you're familiar with uh, this image or an image very much like this. And that is the temperature trend. Since 1890, which is very close to going back to our human records, recorded temperature data. 14 of the last 15 years, the warmest on record. You've heard that recently. Is it accurate? Is it precise? Yes, but it's not accurate. Just look into depth more about the... Uh, definition of both of those. We can have precision without accuracy. We can have accuracy without precision. And that is somewhat what makes up some of the data, the human recorded data, and the data that we say that we believe in or we put most of our trust in. We have really done a better job more recently, let's say the last 20 to 30 years, and how we have recorded that data and our ability to do that. Back in 1840, when really more of a, a a well-recorded history of weather data, not only temperatures, uh, but all that weather was handwritten twice a day, supposed to be at exactly the same time in the morning and afternoon. In 1840, you're homesteading, your family gets sick, the climate isn't doing so well, weather sucks that year, the garden's not growing, you can't always go out and record the weather just for fun. It's changed a lot between then and now. We have total coverage now uh, across the globe and mostly through the ocean, of being able to get that data. That's 175 years of written, better data. Earth is 4.6 million years old. Proxy data, you know, the ice cores, all of that sort of stuff that you hear, measuring O16 and uh, O14, O12, all these different isotopes and figuring out exactly what the climate was at a certain time. It's still kind of best thing we can do, but it's not accurate and precise. It isn't. As well, data from 1842 isn't that great. Little Johnny got sick, and for two weeks, three weeks, we couldn't go out and record accurately, but hey, sure, the record that we just broke last week was way back in 1892 that we broke. Well, was that 1892 that accurate? So can we say 14 of the last 15 years have been the warmest on record in human history or in Earth's history? Just something for you to consider, and then we shift gears. At the same time, while we're considering, are our records accurate and precise? I'm not sitting here denying anything, trust me, as a scientist. We are changing the atmosphere, and we have since the Industrial Revolution. We have pumped carbon emissions and greenhouse gases that are proven to have an effect of warming. But is it fair to connect those human-induced changes over 200, 300 years and correlate them directly and solely to those temperature changes that we're observing? Or do we just have really shitty data over the last 175 years? Think of this. Here's my point in the end. Earth is built to adapt. Oxygen boom 600 million years ago. We're here now because of that. All right, it favored some, it was poisonous to others, and things evolved to where we are now. The CO2 boom of the 17, 18, 1900s, will Earth adapt? Yes, it will. Can we adapt? Could we maybe just evolve to more CO2? Will we be okay? Evolution, we're good at. Conscious adaptation, that self-change, are you good at it? Are we honestly that good at change? A lot of the presentations today have, have 
presented an issue around the world, and can we change, and can we do this? And it all boils down to, are we even good at changing? Can we make that quick change, that self-adaptation, for you to make you keep your New Year's resolution? It's a load of crap. <laughs> do we do what's best for us, or do we do what's convenient? And I think you probably know where this is going. It's going from a global perspective right back here to home. Can we do what's best for us? Even putting aside that really crappy record uh, of, of temperature and weather data, we still accept that we are changing the atmosphere. And we accept that we probably should do something, whether it's going to matter or not. Think of any addiction you have. Maybe it is a drug or alcohol addiction, but maybe it's just a coffee in the morning. Maybe it's sleeping in on Sunday when you should know you should get up and take care of some stuff. Amongst all of it, can we actually give it up? Seriously. It kind of gets exhausting to sit back in my profession and just hear everyone talk about giving up oil and change. And we've got to do something with climate change. And this government's doing that, and this one's not doing that. But can we really give it up? And the point on that last slide, too, is it's kind of like Thanksgiving dinner. How many of you go back for seconds? And then go back and go, oh, it's all gone. That's the only time most of us actually stop. <laughs> so are we capable of doing the right thing, or are we just going to run this oil thing out? Another perspective is that New Year's resolution about your gym membership. How many of you are going to go for the whole year? We want to be healthier, but we don't really want to put in the commitment to change. Whatever that quick adaptation, that conscious adaptation is. And so, yeah, it's a little negative and it's a little doubtful. But in the end, are we really going to change climate change? Or are we just going to wait until we run out? It's a question I just throw out there and have you reflect on. Because really, it all comes down and boils down to other changes that maybe we're all calling for.